Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I'm about to do a video that I get so excited to do every single time that I do it. I do it twice a year. And that is my most anticipated YA fantasy releases. Now, there are so many releases coming out all the time. I just did a summer anticipated releases for romance books um, a few weeks ago, so please go check that out. I will link that up above. But now I'm going to be focusing on the YA fantasy books that are coming out in July through December because now most of them have been announced. It's really hard to make one for the entire year in January because a lot of times titles that come out later in the year don't get announced until a few months before. I've gathered a list of the YA fantasies that I'm most excited for releasing in the latter half of 2021 and we're going to go through them today in this video and I have tried to make this list as all-encompassing as possible. It's a really long list. I'll list all the titles down below so if you like don't catch anything then you can uh, look it up that way but yes it's going to be a long list because I want to make it as thorough as possible however there is always the possibility that I may miss something so you know I tried my best that's all I'm gonna say but I really hope that I'm able to capture all the things that are coming out in the fall and I'll just give it a whirl and yeah I just really tried my hardest to capture all of the YA fantasy books coming out in the fall to be a resource and a guide for everyone that loves reading YA fantasy such as myself. So usually I feel like the first Tuesday of the month is the biggest release date and that's definitely the case for July. So let's get started with July. First up we have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I feel like I've been talking about this book nonstop. It was in my July TBR and I've just been really anticipating it because the author has been doing such a great job of like promoting her book on social media and it just seems very appealing to me. And she's the author of Spin the Dawn as well. Shiori is the only princess of Kiata and she has forbidden magic running through her veins and on the morning of her betrothal she loses control. At first, it seems like a stroke of luck for stalling the wedding that she never wanted in the first place. However, her stepmother, Rakima, also has a dark magic of her own and she banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes. This also comes with a warning for Shiori. If she's ever to speak, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori must seek her brothers. And on her journey, uncovers a conspiracy to take the throne. Yes, it just sounds so good and magical and it is a retelling of some sort but i cannot tell you what retelling it is but i just like have been in love with this cover since the first time that i saw it and i feel like it's getting a lot of hype and i'm so excited that it is and i just can't wait to read it next on july 6th we have the queen will betray you by sarah hanning who is the author of the sea witch and this is a sequel to the princess will save you just look at this cover this is a Charlie Bowder cover. And it is pitched as kind of like a Princess Bride retelling. However, I will say that's very, it's not really a retelling. It's just kind of like inspired with like the general theme of it. But I did really enjoy it when I read it last year and it has been changed from a duology to a trilogy, which is very exciting. And the cover for the sequel is just as gorgeous as the first one. When Princess Amarande is, Princess Amarande's commoner true love is kidnapped in order to coerce her into a political marriage. However, she doesn't give in. She goes to rescue him. With her kingdom on the brink of civil war and no one to trust, she'll need all of her skill to save him, her future, and her kingdom. This was just a lovely book and I'm very excited to see what the author does in the sequel. Next on July 6th is What We Devour by Lindsay Miller and I did an arc of this one and I've already read it so you can check out my review on my Goodreads and it will be talked about in my June wrap up um, as well as I already have a vlog up where I read this over the weekend. But Lorena Adler has a secret. She has the power of the two banished gods within her which is very rare. People either have one or the other. She has hidden her entire life and she's content to spend her days in her small town being the undertaker and marrying her best friend Julian. But when the notorious bloodthirsty crown comes to town he recognizes Lorena's power for what it is so Lorena makes a deal. She will go with the prince and work with him in order to save her betrothed father. And the prince is desperate for her help as he has been trying for years to repair the door which is holding back the vile gods from returning to the world and sowing chaos wherever they go. What We Devour is a standalone fantasy and it's very dark. Next is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. Laura Sebastian is also the author of the Ash Princess trilogy which I own the first one and I do want to get to it eventually. And it is a feminist retelling of the Arthurian legend. Everyone knows the legend of Arthur destined to be a king. 
of Guinevere, destined to betray him, and his most loyal knight, Lancelot. Of the bitter sorceress, Morgana, who turns against them all. But Elaine alone carries the knowledge of what is to come, for Elaine Shalott is cursed to see the future. As visions are fulfilled and an inevitable future closes in on them, Elaine must decide how far she will go to change fate and what she's willing to sacrifice along the way. I love a good old Arthurian retelling. I feel like there's been a, like a decent amount of them coming out lately. Um, like we have Legendborn and the, is it the Guinevere Deception? I want to read them all because they all sound great. Next on July 13th, we have Crown of Shadows by Nikki Paul Preto, and this is the conclusion to the Crown of Feathers trilogy. The world was once ruled by fierce warrior queens where Phoenix Rider warriors were legendary heroes who soared through the skies on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. Veronica is a war orphan who has always dreamed of becoming a phoenix rider. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica runs away to go find the legendary riders, even if that means disguising herself as a boy to join their ranks. Just as Veronica finally feels as though she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. I think this is going to be such an interesting novel and everyone that I have seen read it like absolutely loves it and so I'm really intrigued by it. It also seems like a very fraught and full of tension relationship between the two sisters. So I am all game for that. Also, phoenixes are awesome. The next big release date for July is July 20th. First up on that day, we have These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan, who is actually a romance author. I think it's YA, but maybe it's like YA skirting on new adult. Just that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting from the description because it is described as cruel prince meets a court of thorns and roses in this sexy action-packed fantasy about a girl who's caught between two treacherous fairy courts and their dangerously seductive princes so to me if it's like compared to those books also using the word sexy that feels new adult you know but maybe that's just me. Brie hates the Fae and refuses to have anything to do with them. However, when her sister is sold to the king of the unseelie court, she'll do whatever it takes to get her back, including making a deal with the king himself in order to steal three magical relics back from the Seelie court. Getting access to the Seelie court is easier than she imagines as she poses as a potential bride for Prince Ronan, and she soon finds herself falling for him. Unwilling to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of unseelie misfits and is drawn to their mysterious leader Finn. Ah, just like a good old fey love triangle story between the Seely and the Unseely court. Tale as old as time. I'm here for it. Okay, so next is Curses by Lish McBride. And it is a gender-bent retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Merit refused to fulfill her obligation to marry a prince, and so she was cursed to live as a beast forever unless she decides to marry a man of her mother's choosing before her 18th birthday. Tevin has always been a pawn in his family's cons, and as the prettiest boy in their family, he has the role of tempting rich girls away from their marriages so that their families have to pay him off. After his mother runs afoul of the beast, she decides to trade Tevin for her own freedom. Next is Untethered by Kay Lynn Flanders, which is the sequel to Shielded, and I love both of these covers. And it's described as for fans of Sorcery Thorns and Furyborn, which are two of my favorite books. So like, why haven't I read this yet? I don't, I don't know, but I need to get on that. So Princess Genesera is known for her skills on the battlefield and her kingdom is on the brink of war. However, her father has other plans. As she's the second born, she lacks her brother's firstborn abilities of magic. So the king promises her in marriage to the prince of a neighboring kingdom. On the journey to her betrothed's kingdom, however, her caravan is ambushed and the new threat to her kingdom is worse than anyone could have ever imagined. It just sounds like a classic like kingdom type novel which I love so I want to check it out definitely for sure. Still on July 20th is Red Wolf by Rachel Vincent and it's a high stakes fast paced reimagining of Little Red Riding Hood. For as long as 16 year old Adele can remember the village of Oakville has been surrounded by a dark woods and she's been warned her whole life to never set foot in them. However, Adele has a very valid reason for going into the woods. She is a guardian, which means that she can transform into a wolf in order to protect the town that she lives in. But when following her calling means that she must abandon the person that she loves the most. In the future, she has imagined for herself. She must decide how far she is willing to go in order to keep the village safe. Love a classic fairy tale retelling. 
And as for the last release date in July, which is July 27th, we have Gods and Monsters by Shelby Morin, which is the conclusion to the Serpent and Dove trilogy, which I've read both of those books so far and adored them. And I'm very interested to see how this trilogy concludes. Two years ago, Louise LeBlanc fled her coven and found shelter in the city of Cesarine, where witches like Lou are hunted and feared. Sworn to the church as a chasseur, Reed Diggory has dedicated his whole life to eradicating the world of witches. But when a wicked public stunt forces Lou and Reed into holy matrimony, both must question their values and their beliefs. And things go from there. Yes, it's like the fake marriage trope. It's amazing. And the last book that I have to talk about for July is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. Erin A. Craig wrote House of Salt and Sorrows, which was a surprising fave of mine. And it was just like this haunting atmospheric book that I adored. Larry Downing lives in the quiet village of Amity Falls in the Black Spire mountain range, which is surrounded by five tall peaks of mountains and bordered by a nearly impenetrable forest. Visitors are few and rare, but when a supply party goes missing, some worry that the monsters that once stalked the region have returned. More strange activities that plague the town and it all turns to these devilish and mystical creatures who promise to fulfill the residents deepest desires in return for one small favor. Mm, love that. Okay, so now we're moving on to the books coming out in August. First up, we have August 3rd as the first big release date. First up is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. And this is described as for fans of Wilder Girls and Ninth House. It's a dark, twisty, atmospheric thriller about a boarding school haunted by its history of witchcraft and two girls dangerously close to digging up the past. I'm always here for like a dark academia with a touch of witchcraft, you know? And I do believe that it is sapphic. The next day is August 10th and we have Rise Up From The Embers by Sarah Roche and Kristen Simmons and this is the sequel to Set Fire To The Gods. Ash is descended from a long line of gladiators and when her mother dies in the arena, she is determined to get revenge on the fire god. Maddox grew up on the streets to pay his family's taxes, but he doesn't have earth magic like everyone thinks. He has something else that no one has seen in centuries. When an attempted revenge plot inadvertently goes wrong, Ash sets the earth and fire gods into a conflict that can only be settled by the deadly lavish gladiator games. Yes, this is a gladiator inspired book. Next on August 17th is Forest Born by Elaine Audrey Becker. And the tagline is to be born of the forest is a gift and a curse. Rora is a shifter as magical as all of those are that are born in the forest and she uses her abilities to spy for the king. When a magical illness ravages the kingdom, Rora is shocked to learn that her best friend and prince Finley has caught it too. His only hope is Stardust, a magical element which is found in the forests in which Rora grew up in and refused to ever return to. It just sounds like very magical, like the forest setting. I love a good magical forest. So I'm really looking forward to this one. On August 17th, we have Phantom Heart by Kelly Craig. Stephanie doesn't believe in ghosts, despite her six-year-old sister insisting that a murder figure is living in her closet. And the rumors at school, Stephanie isn't convinced that her father's latest renovation project on a crumbling Victorian mansion houses the soul of a monster. So when the very charming and paranormally obsessed Lucas takes interest in Stephanie and the home that her family is renovating, the supernatural and romantic activity escalates to an all-time high. And that doesn't even account for the dashing British accent Eric who has taken up residence in Stephanie's dream. And it is described as a steamy YA romance with Twilight vibes inspired by the classic fan of the opera. It's a very interesting combination of things. Also on August 17th, we have Redemptor by Jordan Ifueco, which is the sequel to Rape Breaker. Tassari has always longed for the warmth of a family. She was raised in isolation by the mysterious woman known only as the Lady. And when the Lady takes her to the capital to compete in a competition with other children for a chance to be chosen as one of the crowns, Prince Council of Eleven, she'll be joined by the other council members through a bond known as the Ray, a bond that's deeper than blood. But the lady has the other ideas for Tessari, kill the crown prince when she gets close enough to him. And last up for August, we have The Witch Haven by Sasha Peyton Smith. It's 1911 in New York City, and Frances spends her days as a seamstress, mourning the death of her brother. Everything changes when she's attacked and a man ends up dead with a pair of scissors in his neck, but she has no idea how that happened. Before she can be convicted, two cape-wearing nurses show up and tell her that she must be escorted to the Haxahaven Sanitarium. But it turns out the sanitarium is actually a school for witches. I love a good historical witchy book and so this one just seems really awesome. 
Okay, moving on to September now. I feel like September is always like a really busy time for YA releases as well as October. I feel like those months are always like just stacked with books. So first up on September 7th, we have The Last Legacy by Adrian Young, and I do believe that this book takes place in the same world as Fable and Namesake. When a letter from her uncle arrives on her 18th birthday, Bryn is eager to prove herself and finally take her place in her long lost family. However, she must win everyone's trust if she's able to take her place in the architecture of the family. It doesn't take long for her to see that the Roths are tangled up in something dark and mysterious, and the cost of being accepted by the family may just be too high for Bryn to pay. I've always loved Adrian Young's books. I feel like they just have beautiful writing. I'm really looking forward also to reading Fable hopefully soon so I can be in this world and then I'll probably want to read this one immediately. Also on September 7th, we have A Clash of Steel, a Treasure Island remix. In 1826, the golden age of piracy is coming to a close. Cheyenne has grown up with stories about the dragon fleet and its ruthless leader, a woman known only as the Dragon Queen, all her life. Cheyenne desperately wants to set sail and explore, mainly to find her father, a presumed dead member of the dragon fleet. Her only memento of him is a pendant of his that she always wears, but the pendant's true nature is revealed when a woman named An steals it, only to return it to Cheyenne in exchange for her helping to decode the tiny map that is inside. Rumor has it that the dragon queen had one last treasure. And it's a remix of the classic adventure novel Treasure Island. The next big release date is September 14th. So first up, we have Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. She is the author of A Curse So Dark and Lonely series, of which I read the first two. I really need to finish out that series and read the last one. However, I'm very excited for her new fantasy series. The Kingdom of Kandala is on the brink of disaster. A sickness has begun ravaging the land. King Harrison was thrust into power after the assassination of his parents, leaving his brother to be the king's justice. The brothers have learned to react mercilessly to any signs of rebellion in order to maintain their hold on their kingdom. The only cure for the sickness ravaging their land is made from moonflower petals, and it is severely limited. Out in the wilds, a pocket theory apprentice Tessa is tired of seeing her neighbors die and suffering ignored by the unyielding royals. Every night, she and her best friend Wes risk their lives to steal moonflower petals and distribute them to those who need it most. As rumors spread and the cure no longer works, a particularly cruel act from the king's justice sparks Tessa to do the unthinkable and sneak into the palace. What she finds upon her arrival makes her wonder if it's even possible to fix Kandala without destroying it first. What I love about Bridget Kemmerer, Kemmerer, oh, I have such a hard time saying her last name. What I love about Bridget Kemmerer's books is that since she has come from a background of like writing contemporary first is that they're very like approachable and light and fun and have like this contemporary feel to them even though they are fantasy books so it just makes it like always really fun to read and I'm very intrigued by this premise of the moonflower petals and I'm excited for it. Also on September 14th, we have The Hollow Heart, which is the follow-up to The Midnight Lot by Marie Brodzinski. And I believe this is a follow-up series to the Winner's Curse trilogy, but correct me if I'm wrong. Where Niram lives, crime is bound, and you have to live by the harsh rules, and pleasures are only reserved for the high kit. Niram keeps her head down and her dangerous secrets close to her chest. But then she encounters Sid, a rakish traveler who whispers rumors that the high caste possesses magic. Sid tempts Niram to seek that magic for herself. Next up on September 21st is Iron Widow by Sharon J. Zhao. And this is described as Pacific Rim meets The Handmaid's Tale, which is a very interesting combination. And I've heard nothing but great things about this so far. The boys of Huaxia dream of pairing up with girls to pilot chrysalises, giant transforming robots that can battle the mecha aliens that lurk beyond the Great Wall. It doesn't matter that the girls often die from the mental strain. When 18 year old Zetan offers herself up as a concubine pilot, it's to assassinate the ace pilot that was responsible for her sister's death. But she gets her vengeance in a way that nobody predicted. She kills him through the psychic link between pilots and emerges from the cockpit unscathed. She is labeled an Iron Widow, a much feared and much silent kind of powerful pilot who can sacrifice boys up to the power of the chrysalis. I mean, that just sounds awesome. And next is the last in a trilogy, and this is Into the Dying Light by Katie Ruiz Poole. And this is the last book in the They Will Company Darkness series which I adore. I read the first one two years ago. I need to read the sequel and this last one, but it's such an amazing series. Hopefully I'll like reread the first one and then read the second and the third because I like to marathon series like that, especially something like this where there's a lot of details involved. The Age of Darkness approaches. Five stand in its way. Who will stop it or unleash it? For generations, the seven prophets guided humanity 
until about 100 years ago when they all disappeared leaving one final prophecy. This prophecy foretold the coming of an age of darkness and one prophet that could be the world's salvation or the cause of its destruction. As chaos takes hold, five souls are set on the course for collision. An exiled prince, a ruthless killer, a once faithful leader, a reckless gambler and a dying girl. It's a very good multi POV story with just so many amazing elements and I really truly like adored it when I read it and I can't wait to see what happens to these characters and like how everything ends up. Now we have a bunch of books that come out on September 28th. First up being Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. Margaret Rogerson is one of my faves. She wrote Sorcery of Thorns and Enchantment of Ravens, which are both beautiful YA standalones that ugh, just have my heart. And so this is her first ever duology. I'm so excited for it. Oh my gosh, this is probably one of my top most anticipated books, I will say. The Dead of Laura Lee, Do Not Rest. Artisma is trained to be a gray sister, a nun who cleanses the bodies of the dead so that they can move on and be in peace. Otherwise, they will rise as spirits with a ravenous hunger for the living. She would rather deal with the dead than the living, who trade whispers about her scarred hands and troubled past. When her convent is attacked by possessed soldiers, Artisma defends it by awakening an ancient spirit bound to a relic. It is a revenant, a malevolent being that threatens to possess her the moment she drops her guard. Wielding its extraordinary power, almost consumes her, but death has come to Loralee, and only a Vespertine, a priestess, trained to wield a high relic, has any chance of stopping. With all the knowledge of the Vespertines lost to time, Artisma turns to the last remaining expert for help, the Revenant itself. I mean, like a badass, like magic fighting nun with like these possessed spirits. I mean, it just sounds amazing. And like, I will read anything that Margaret Rogerson writes. So I'm ready for it. Next on September 28th, we have Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone, and it's a lush gothic fantasy. When Violetta Graceling arrives at the haunted Lake's Edge estate, she expects to find a monster. She knows the terrifying rumors about Rowan Sylvanen, who drowned his entire family when he was a boy. But neither the estate nor the monster are what they seem. There are monsters in the wood. As Letta falls for Rowan, she discovers he is bound to the Lord Under, the sinister death god lurking in the black waters of the lake. A creature to whom Letta is inexplicably drawn. And it just sounds amazing. I mean, like perfect gothic fantasy. The cover is just everything and I want it. Next up on September 28th is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Fate binds two black teenagers together as they strike in a dangerous alliance to hunt down the ancient creature menacing their home and discover much more than they bargained for. Magic doesn't exist in the broken city of Lakosa anymore, especially for girls like, like Kofi. She is indentured to the infamous night zoo where she takes care of the animal. But the night her loved one's safety is threatened by, by the zoo's own master, Kofi unleashes a power she doesn't fully understand, and the consequences are dire. Ikon is destined to become a son of six, an elite warrior. But on the night of his final rite of passage, a fire upends his plans. In its midst, Ikon not only encounters the Shitani, a vicious monster that has plagued the city, but a curious girl that seems to have the power to ward off the beast. Kofi's power ultimately saves Ikon, but his choice to let her flee dooms his prospects of ever becoming a warrior. And lastly, on September 30th, we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, who is the author of the Carval trilogy. Evangeline Fox was raised in her father's shop of curiosity, where she grew up on legends about immortals like the Prince of Hearts. She knows his powers are mythic, his kiss worth dying for and that bargains with him rarely end well. But when Evangeline learns that the love of her life is about to marry another, she's willing to offer whatever it takes for the Prince of Hearts to stop the wedding. The prince only asks for three kisses. But after Evangeline's first promised kiss, she learns that the Prince of Hearts wants more from her than she bargained for. Sounds like a very fun, it gives me like fantasy romance vibes, so I'm excited for it. Okay, moving on to October, which is also a month that is stacked full of releases. First up on October 5th, we have When the Night Breaks by Janela Angelos, which is the sequel to Where Dreams Descend. In a city covered in ice and ruin, a group of magicians face off in a daring game of magical feats to find the next headliner of the Conquering Circus, only to find themselves under the threat of an unseen danger striking behind the scenes. We have the star, Kalia, a showgirl, willing to prove that she's the best no matter what. The master, Jack, the enigmatic keeper of the club, 
love more than one lie told. The magician, DeMarco, the brooding judge with the dark past that he can no longer hide. And this is a duology, so this is the concluding book in this duology. And I read the first one when it came out, and it's just like very magical and very, very fun. So I'm really interested to see where this concluding novel takes our characters. Also on October 5th, we have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I love Margaret Owen. I've read her The Merciful Crow duology, loved it. And now this is a goose girl retelling. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful kind princess who was betrothed to the prince of a faraway kingdom. When she set off on her journey to her betrothed, her mother gifted her a new handmaiden. But instead of serving the princess, the handmaiden took her place. For a year, the true princess toiled away like a common goose girl, while the wicked maid lived high in the palace, ruling the kingdom. But the truth came out, the princess took back, name her crown, and her husband, and the imposter died for her crimes. Then one day, the wicked maid told her own story. So it seems like it's like from the perspective of the villain, but like flipped. So I'm very interested to see how this retelling goes, and I've loved Margaret Owen's stuff. So I'm so, so excited for this one. And lastly, on October 5th, we have Luminous by Mara Rutherford, who is the author of the Crown of Coral and Pearl duology. Leora has spent her life in hiding, knowing that discovery could mean that she would be subjected to the king's warlock, Darius, who uses others' magic to grow in his own power. But when her nightmare comes to pass, Darius doesn't take her. He demands that her little sister be taken to the capital instead. To make matters worse, Leoria's childhood friend and the only one that knows her secret is missing right after Darius's visit to find her friend Evren and save her sister. Leora must embrace the power that she always feared. Uh, I just, I adored Crown of Coral and Pearl and so I'm really excited for this new book from her. And I've been following her like on Instagram and like seeing all the updates she has for this book. The cover is gorgeous and I'm just so excited about this one. So we have The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker which comes out on October 12th. Half British Reaper, half Japanese Shigenami. Ren Scarborough has been collecting souls in the streets of London for over a century. Expected to obey the harsh hierarchy of the Reapers who despise her, Ren conceals her emotions and avoids her tormentors as much as she can. When her failure to control her Shigenami abilities drives Ren out of London, she goes to Japan in order to seek the acceptance that she's never got. Accompanied by her younger brother, the only creature to ever love her, Ren enters the Japanese underworld to serve the goddess of death. Only to learn here too, she must prove herself worthy. Determined to earn respect, Ren accepts an impossible task, find and eliminate three dangerous yokai demons, and learns how far she'll go to earn her place at death's side. This sounds awesome. Next on October 12th, we have Jade Fire Gold by Seal Tan, and I've heard this is for Zutara lovers, so that instantly intrigued me. In an empire on the brink of war, On is a no one, with no past and no family. Altan is a lost heir, his future stolen away as a child. When they meet, Altan sees in On a path to reclaiming the throne. On sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her arcane magical ability, but they may have to pay a far deadlier price than either of them imagined. And we also have The Guilt of Cage by Lynette Noni, which is the sequel to The Prison Healer. Kiva has spent the last 10 years working as a healer in one of the world's most notorious prisons. When the rebel queen is captured, Kiva is charged with for keeping the ill woman alive long enough to undergo trial. Then a coded message from Kiva's family arrived. Don't let her die. Aware that the trials that the queen will be forced to undergo as part of her punishment will kill the sickly queen, Kiva volunteers to take her place. If she succeeds, both her and the queen will be granted their freedom. This sounds awesome and it was pitched as for fans of Sarah J Mass, so that is my demographic. And last up for October, we have Kingdom of the Curse by Kiri Maniscalco, which is the follow-up to Kingdom of the Wicked, which I love Kiri Maniscalco. This is both editions of the first book in the series. Amelia and Victoria are twin witches that are working in her family's restaurant in Sicily when her sister is brutally murdered. Amelia will not know peace until she is able to get revenge on the person that killed her sister. And so she takes up with Wrath, a prince of hell who has also been tasked with finding the killer of the witches. But Wrath is not as he seems. And you can never be certain what you are going to get with a prince of hell. I loved the first book. The Italian vibes were very strong and I just adored it. And I'm like, the ending, the ending was insane. So like, I need to know what happens pretty immediately. So I will be purchasing this book as soon as it comes out. <laughs> 
And now we have November. Starting off on November 2nd, of course, first Tuesday of the month, tons of books coming out. The first book is Gilded by Marissa Meyer, who is the author of the Lunar Chronicles and the Renegade series. And it's a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. I feel like she's going back to her roots of fairy tale retellings and I'm so excited. Long ago cursed by the God of Lies, a poor Miller's daughter has developed a talent for spinning stories that are as fantastical and spellbounding as they are entirely untrue. Or so everyone believes. When one of Cyrilda's stories draws the attention of the sinister Earl King and his ghostly hunters, she finds herself swept away in a world where ghouls and phantoms prowl. The king orders Cyrilda into the impossible task of spinning straw into gold or be killed for telling falsehood. In desperation, Cyrilda unwittingly summons a mysterious boy to her side. He agrees to help her for a price. Love isn't meant to be part of the bargain. I don't know if anyone else has this like memory buried within them, but I used to watch the Barney episode of Rumpelstiltskin and I like loved that episode for some reason. So I just like feel weirdly attached from Rumpelstiltskin and the story. I should really read also um, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I say Rumble still is getting retelling. Next we have Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross, which is an author I've yet to read anything of hers, but I know once I do read it, I'm gonna love it, if that makes sense. I haven't even read anything of hers yet. Anyways, this cover is captivating me. Like I saw this cover and I'm like, oh my God, I need this book. And it's described as a lush and layered story about magic and the captivating power of dreams. A curse plays the realm of Asnor. During each new moon, magic flows near my mountains and brings nightmares to life. Only magicians who serve as territory wardens stand between these nightmares and the people of the realm. Clementine is ready to take over as the warden of her small village, but when two magicians challenge her, she's unwittingly drawn into a centuries-old conflict. She seeks revenge, but as she unwittingly gets closer to one of the young magicians, secrets begin to rise, and thus she must unite with her enemy to fight the realm's curse. I love anything that has to do with like dream magic. I just like love, I don't know, dreams. So I am very excited for this one. And I do hope to read some of her other works before this book comes out. I bought her Queen's Rising series, so she has that duology. And we have Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nyan, which is the concluding novel in the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy, which I have these books here, Girls of Paper and Fire, Girls of Storm and Shadow. And I read this one around the time it came out, loved it. It's an amazing sapphic YA fantasy that does really tackle some dark themes. So definitely check their trigger warnings before you read because there is a pretty big trigger warning for sexual assault. Each year, eight beautiful girls are chosen to be paper girls for the Demon King. It's the highest honor they could hope for and yet the most demeaning as they will be his concubines for the next year. And this year, there's a ninth but instead of paper, she's made of fire. Lee is a member of the paper cast, the lowest and most persecuted cast from which the girls are chosen. She lives in a remote village with her father, mourning the loss of her mother to the Demon King. Now the guards are back and this time it's Lei thereafter, the girl with the golden eyes whose beauty has piqued the king's interest. Over weeks of training in the opulent but oppressive palace, Lei and the other girls learn the skills to charm the king as his consort. There, she does the unthinkable. She falls in love. It is just like such a heart-wrenching, read and like really important and like i don't know like i just really loved it it was really tough to read but i'm very excited to continue on with the series and kind of like see where the characters end up i feel like there's a lot of series that started coming out like two years ago that are wrapping up this year that i really want to kind of like read all the way through still november 2nd we have a psalm of storms and silence by roseanne a brown which is the sequel to A Song of Wraiths and Ruin, which is this stunning book. A vengeful spirit abducts Moloch's younger sister, Nadia, as payment into the city. So Moloch strikes a fatal deal. Kill Karina, crown, crown princess of Ziran for Nadia's freedom. But Karina has deadly aspirations of her own. Her mother, the Sultana, has been assassinated. Her court threatens mutiny. Grief-stricken, Karina decides to resurrect her mother through ancient magic requiring the beating heart of a king. And she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of the Celestia competition. When Malik breaks his way into the competition, they are set on a collision course for one another. This is a duology, so this is the concluding novel in the duology, and I'm, um, I've heard nothing but great things about this one, so I'm really excited to check both of them out. On November 5th, we have The Excalibur Curse by Kirsten White, which is the third in the Camelot Rising series. Princess Guinevere has come to Camelot to wed a stranger, King Arthur. However, Guinevere has been sent to being King Arthur's wife. And 
his secret protector. Whenever his real name and her real identity are a secret. She's a changeling, a girl who's given everything to protect Camelot. I love a good King Arthur retelling, I'll tell you that much. Next on November 9th, we have The Righteous by Renee Adier, which is the third in the Beautiful series. It's 1872 and New Orleans is a city ruled by the dead. But to Celine Rasseo, New Orleans provides her safe haven after she flees from Paris. She's taken in by the Sisters of the Ursuline Convent. She soon becomes embroiled in the city's dark underworld, known as La Cour de Lyons, after catching the eye of the group's enigmatic leader, Sebastian Saint Germain. When the body of one of the girls from the convent is found in the lair of Le Cour de Lyon, Celine battles her attraction to him and suspicions about Sebastian's guilt, along with the shame of her own horrible secret. And yes, this is a vampire book. So it's lots of fun. I've read the first two in the series and so I'm very interested in reading the third and seeing where things go because I think things took a very unexpected turn in The Damned. Next on November 9th is Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen and I love this cover and like the minty color scheme is so pretty. Simi prayed to the gods once. Now she serves them as Mami Wata, a mermaid collecting the souls of those who die at the sea and blessing their journey back home. But when a living boy is thrown overboard, Simi does the unthinkable. She saves his life, going against an ancient decree, and punishment awaits those who defy it. So it's like a West African inspired Little Mermaid retelling, I think, which just sounds awesome. On November 9th, it's also All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. You found love with the victors of the Hunger Games. Now meet the villains of the Blood Veil. After a publication of a salacious tell-all, the remote city of Ilvernath is thrust into the worldwide spotlight. Because every generation, seven families name a champion to compete amongst them in a tournament to the death. The winner is awarded their family control over the city's high magic supply. It's very interesting. And now on November 16th, we have a sequel, which is Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong, which is the sequel to These Violent Delights, which I read in January and adored. These Violent Delights takes place in 1926 Shanghai and is a loose Romeo and Juliet retelling. A blood feud between two rival gangs runs the streets red in blood. At the heart of it all is Julia Kai, a former flapper who has returned to Shanghai to assume her role as the heir of the Scarlet Gang. The only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. And behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov, Juliet's first love and first betrayal. But when gangsters on both sides sow signs of instability, which results in them tearing their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion of a madness. As the deaths stack up, Roma and Juliet must set their differences aside and work together to stop the mayhem. This is a duology, I believe, so I'm very interested to see where things go in the concluding novel. Last up for the end of November is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the Skyward series. I'm personally very excited for this one because I love Skyward. Defeated, crushed, and almost drove into extinction, the remains of the human population are trapped on a planet that are continuously attacked by mysterious alien forces. Spenza longs to be a pilot. However, the fact that her father was a decorated Space Force pilot and was killed when he abandoned his crew is a big barrier to her entry into the academy. However, when Svetza finds an ancient ship, she realizes that this dream may just be a reality. And I just like love this series. I think it's just so inventive and unique and a really great sci-fi. So I'm just very, very interested to see where things go because it's like really like trippy and cool and like it has gone in so many interesting directions in the second book as well. So interested to continue discovering things about this world. And finally we have December, for which I actually only have one book, but this book just looks awesome. And it's called The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jacinka and it's out December 7th. And literally this cover is everything. And it's described as the Wicked Deep meets the House of Salt and Sorrows. It's a standalone YA fantasy set in a snow cloaked kingdom where witches are burned and two enchantresses secretly compete for the heart of a prince. All the while they may be falling out for one another. So yes, it's sapphic and it just sounds amazing. And like, I cannot emphasize enough how much I love this cover, like seriously. And I do believe it is Polish inspired, which is awesome. I don't think I've ever read a book that is like specifically inspired by Polish culture, so I'm very intrigued by that. 
Okay, and there you have it. There are my anticipated releases for the back half of the year. There's honestly so many great books that are coming out. I really hope I get to a large chunk of them. Please let me know down below in the comments what is your most anticipated release for the back half of 2021. And please leave a little heart if you liked this video. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.